The question for today is, will Heia's Godzilla work in your 118 scale universe? Shut up and sit down. Hey you skellywags, today we're having a look at Heia's heat ray Godzilla. Now Godzilla, as most of you will know, is a fictional monster that's as tall or taller than the largest buildings made by man. This Godzilla, however, stands at about 7 inches tall. So compared against your normal 118 scale figure, which is what my collection is mostly made up of, he's a tad bit small. Still, I wanted to see if he can work in my 118 scale universe. But before we get into any of that, I want to give a big shout out and thanks to Calcus Toy for sending me this for review. If you want your own Heat Ray Godzilla or any other Heia or even Joy Toy products, check my affiliate links below in the description where you can support the channel and use my code skellywagstv calcus for 6% off all items. Again, affiliate links in the description. So first up, let's take a closer look at this bad boy and check out what he can do. This look is based off Godzilla's look in the movie Godzilla vs Kong, specifically when he's using his blue heat ray power, giving him this blue glow in certain areas which you can see is painted rather well on this figure. As is the case with most Heia products, the sculpt work is fantastic. And the paint apps, while fairly simple, is done very well. What would have been nice is if they'd use like fluorescent or maybe glow-in-the-dark paint for those effects. But... Overall, they've done a good job. Um, I can't recall if it's exactly like it is in a movie, but it definitely looks great in hand. As for articulation, this Godzilla head comes with an articulated jaw. Move up and down. There's also an articulated tongue. If you can get it from um, there. There you go. This hangry look. And you can also move his neck, which comes in sort of different parts there. We're on a ball peg. You go left and right. Move up. And do all sorts, of, basically. His arms are on a ball joint. It moves up like that laterally, not very much. And go all the way around single elbow you can go down up there a certain angle it can go about 90 that but from other angles won't be as good but there is a twist so you can do the john cena you can't see me wrist articulation is on a ball but stays on the hand which is uh, not like here and there's movement here at the torso and you can move it a bit more than it should really go so it looks alright from certain angles if you look at the back ah, it breaks up that there at the back you see from certain angles it looks uh, okay Jean-Claude Jean not great and not exactly monstrous leg goes up and can go all the way round unnecessarily there's a double bend at the knee that doesn't give you very much at all not even 90 ball joint the foot there i don't have to move it around can get a little bit out of that you've got separate parts for the tail one two three four five six seven 
eight, nine. So you can get quite a bit of movement pushing it. They're nice, smooth, better than that, that crocker figure. You go up as well, down to help balance if you like. So articulation is there, but he's not going to be getting any prizes for it. He's not going to be very dynamic, which it's not really what you're going to want from a Godzilla anyway. It's not like he does any uh, super dynamic poses or anything like that in any of the Godzilla iterations, the animated live action or anything like that. But there's enough here to make him look a bit expressive and not just uh, a brick of a monster. Accessories are fairly light. He's got an alternate head with a fixed mouth. This is so that you can place the effect piece. So this is the effect piece, which kind of looks like an ice blast or something like that, which I thought it was, but I remembered it's uh, like a laser blast thing, which is why this is heat ray Godzilla. That's what we put in the mouth. You just stuff this thing in his mouth until there's nowhere for him to breathe via his mouth. Like that, S sticks in there very nicely. This head, you pop off, place this one in. This one's a bit difficult to get into the neck piece because it's not really made for it, but you can get it in there. There you go. Get that in. So you can just sort of stand around with the, uh, the seat blast like that. Also looks good from different angles as well. This is the alternate neck piece so we can look up higher than he can at the moment. Take these bits off, it's in two pieces. A rubbery plastic, that, oh, I think I've just broken that. So three pieces now for me. Yeah, that was one piece. Now there's three pieces. Let's hide this awful neck with this new neck piece. And we can pop this head on at the top. So we can shoot this thing up in the air like that. I'm sure he does this in the movie. Or something. Or you can balance him out to fire this thing forward with his tail. Just does balance. Yeah, you just get it right like that. So this is a brilliant representation of Godzilla from his look in Godzilla vs. Kong. Minimal accessories, but very appropriate. But does he work in 118 scale? In a year where we've already had to suspend disbelief in an oversized werewolf existing in the Infinity franchise, and more recently, a giant man Primarch towering over the already large space marines in Warhammer, I think it's safe to let your imagination run wild and have a seven inch lizard monster walk among your three and three quarter inch 4-inch and even 5-inch figures. For me, he will rule as king in my CD cyberpunk underworld, where you can bump into any character from any franchise in my Skellyverse. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you going to be grabbing Godzilla? Do you have any figures that aren't 118 scale in your 118 scale universe? Remember to check out Calcus Toy and use my code SkellywagsTV Calcus for 6% off their shop. Link will be in the description. If you like this video, click the thumbs up for more content. Subscribe 
and I'll scale you later.